it's one of the most complicated projects I think we've done. Um, I mean, I, I have been only with the company for five years, but even people who've been with the company for 10 years have said this is one of the most complex things we've ever tackled. It's big. Beijing, California is a futuristic story about uh, China taking over the United States and uh, what happens to Americans when that happens. And um, we're not only invaded, but uh, taken over uh, and turned into a third world country. Like if you think of the BP spill, and I, I refer to it in the play, although I swear I, I didn't know about it three years ago when I started writing about oil spills um, and, and pollution. Um, it just seems to me that we have so many natural disasters without spending the money or the resources to help the people who need need help in them. The infrastructure is, is, uh, is crumbling and that we need to spend time and thought about putting that together. And that, but that if it gets a lot worse in three or four different ways, that our country could be in bad shape. Simultaneously, other countries are rising. I mean, that is true. I'm not making that up. Is, uh, they are rising. They are investing in the United States. What if they suddenly wanted their money back? And all that happened all at one time. And the poor guy who is the president in our play has to sort of deal with that. <laughs> Dewey and I wanted to investigate what, would, what is Americanness? What would happen, what would we as Americans become if our entitlement, our sense of entitlement, our, um, our access to the world's resources, our wealth, our power, our army, if that were suddenly taken away from us, who would we become? What kinds of people would we become? And we get to show that in three sections of this play. I think they're handling the different political issues pretty interestingly, and just the discussion about it's interesting to watch. I mean, even the way they're setting up the stage is really cool. Um, the unique use of the space. I've seen a lot of shows in this theater, so it's kind of cool to see how Dewey set everything up. Um, and it's interesting to see, I mean, the language, the way language is being used in the play is really interesting too. Taking lots of different ideas, lots of different kinds of stories, stories doing new from growing up in Vietnam and from visiting uh, Thailand and Vietnam and Asia, and then my experiences living in the third world in Mexico and Venezuela and, and uh, in, in other countries in, in Latin America, and sort of putting these experiences together and thinking about what would that look like if the, if the people in the third world were really people who had been middle-class Americans living in the sunset in San Francisco. What would, what would their poverty look like, or their descent into poverty look like? And that took us four years to really get our minds around that and think about that through workshops with lots of different actors and lots of people sharing their stories and us recording it and then creating a script out of many of these improvisation workshops. I think, you know what, like, Asian Americans very rarely see both of their cultures represented. Like your American side and your, you know, like I listen to Chinese, you know, Chinese pop side and watch Kung Fu story side. Uh, and both of that is here. Uh, so I think it's very much a story for Asian Americans and not really for, you know, uh, other groups. I think Asian Americans will receive this the best because they'll see, you know, a new type of story that represents kind of their world. I wanted to write a story about translators. I had heard a story about translators in Iraq uh, helping American journalists. And I thought, you know, they can translate the words, but in the middle of a, of a dogfight, in the middle of some kind of chaos in the street, will they be able to translate the feelings and the intentions of the Iraqi people in, the, in Arabic to the American journalists, they can translate the words, but how about the feelings and the intention? In our play in the third episode, where Elaine, an Asian American woman who speaks Mandarin perfectly, has witnessed an altercation in which an American man has tried to take a taxi from a Chinese uh, diplomat and has used the excuse, first come, first serve, as his reason to take the taxi. In the diplomat's mind, she is higher than he is, so she deserves the taxi. And for that reason, the, the tragedy strikes. And so that, that's an example of our Americanness not translating easily to the reporters who are reporting the story.
Uh, I would say that's because there's a lot of story and you have to tell it clearly. There's also a lot of locations and characters and you have to make sure that's clear and people feel it. Asian Americans shouldn't be limited by being Asian Americans. Um, in many ways, like I think about the friends that I know who are Asian Americans and who are the people involved in their life or their stories. And of course there are Asian people in it, but there's also Caucasians and blacks and Latinos and who knows what else, what other forms. And all that's a part of the story. And you can see that this story is not possible. It was just an Asian cast. It's a story that has to be told by much, much more than that because our lives as Asian Americans, uh, Asian Americans are much more complicated than that. The run is from July 1st today, opening night, sold out, yay, until July 17th. It's a Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Uh, between there on each Sunday, there's a, two, a 5 o'clock matinee, and the rest of the shows are at 8 o'clock Thursday, Friday, Saturday, each weekend. So there are 12 shows starting today. And anyone can come see it. You go on the uh, Asian American Theater website and click for tickets.